السلام علیکم ڈیئر ایٹتھ کلاس اسٹوڈنٹس وام ویلکم ٹو یو ونس اگین ان دس آن لائن لیکچر سیریز ان ٹوڈیز ویڈیو لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے نیو چیپٹر اینڈ The name of this chapter is When People Rebel, 1857 and after. Dear students, this chapter will give a detailed explanation regarding a revolt to 1857. And this revolt to 1857 is also known as the first war of indian independence it was the year 1857 when the people of indian subcontinent realized that they have to raise their voice against the british colonialism The chapter when people rebel 1857 and after is divided into number of topics. The first topic is named as policies and the people. And with this there is one more sentence highlighted there it is nawabs lose their power. in the previous four chapters of this book we studied that the policies made by the britishers were affecting the lives of indian people in many ways these policies of east india company had effect on different people such as kings queens sepoys and peasants so they started resisting against the pressures as these policies were against their rights and sentiments since the mid 18th century the kings had seen their power eroding they were losing their authority gradually residents were appointed in many states and the kings were not allowed to keep their army most of them lost their territories then what happened many kings and queens tried to negotiate with the company in order to safeguard their interest for example queen lakshmi bai wanted the company to recognize her adopted son as the legal heir after her husband's death nana sahib the adopted son of peshwa bajirao ii pleaded that he should receive his father's pension as he was his legal heir but the britishers never accepted this as they were sure of their power avadh was the last territory to be annexed in 1801 britishers imposed subsidiary alliance there subsidiary uh, subsidiary alliance is a name of a policy according to this subsidiary alliance according to the rule of the subsidiary alliance Indian rulers were not allowed to have their independent armed forces they had to keep company's army and pay their maintenance in 1856 they took over it on the pretext of misgovernment of the territory if they failed to do so the part of their territory was taken away as penalty by the britishers this was done by lord dalhousie 
the company even tried to deteriorate the authority of Mughals. They stopped minting coins on the Mughals, Mughal king's name. In 1849, Governor General Lord Dalhousie announced that the successor of Bahadur Shah will not stay in the Red Fort. And in 1856, Governor General Canning declared that the Mughal kingdom had come to an end with the death of Bahadur Shah Zafar. And his successors would be known as the prince, not a not king. Right? Dear students, all these policies were against the sentiments of the Indian people. Now, who started the revolt? How did it start? Uh, started? Where did it started? It all will be discussed in the coming topics of this chapter. This was the introductory lecture of this chapter. Hope you will stay connected with me. Thank you. Have a nice day. God bless you all.